And okay, now judgment is expected on Monday in the case of Dr. Nandipa Makutumana versus the SAPS, NPA, and Home Affairs. Makutumana is challenging her arrest in Tanzania with a convicted rapist lover, Tabo Pesta, with an urgent application that seeks to have her released from custody. Earlier today, we had arguments in court from Makutumana's defense advocate, Anton Katz, then advocate Neil Snellenberg, representing the NPA and the police, and advocate Petrus Joubert Zitzman, representing Home Affairs. My colleague, the senior reporter, Cindy Lomasigana, was in court and uh, carefully following those developments today. Good afternoon, um, good evening, Cindy Lorada, may I say. Welcome to today and thank you very much for your time. A very interesting day, indeed, listening to those arguments in court today. Marku Dumana's legal counsel spoke first, calling her return to South Africa illegal. Take us through that. A very interesting day in the Free State High Court, Bradan, where finally uh, arguments were heard in Dr. Nandipa's urgent court application uh, to declare her arrest uh, wrongful, unlawful, um, as well as have legal proceedings against her set aside. And uh, we heard, of course, from her legal team, she was represented by senior counsel, um, um, advocate Anton Katz, uh, who we know, of course, specializes in international law, and he proceeded to to tell the court how, in essence, uh, there was collusion between Tanzanian as well as South African authorities um, in this uh, process uh, to have Dr. Nandipa and Besta brought back uh, to South Africa. He says uh, this was an extradition uh, disguised as a deportation, saying that in terms of international law, um, there is just simply no way uh, a deportation process uh, um, requires, uh, you know, talks or negotiations between authorities saying that a deportation process um, is a unilateral decision that is made by the country uh, that is uh, deporting uh, the people that it wants out um, of uh, the country. Um, also stating that uh, South African officials in the manner in which they acted um, in Tanzania was unlawful. Let's take a listen. The facts here demonstrate Clearly, on any version, this was extradition. That's it. That's our case. I could actually sit down now, but I'll need to drill down to the facts. <laughs> Let me just add to the... So that's, that's our case. Nobody can get away from what happened here. The police and an eight-member team, who in their words deliberated with the Tanzanian officials, as to the way forward. That was on the 10th of April. Now, Slindelo, according to the NPA and SAPS's legal counsel, Mark Udumana actually said that she wanted to return home when, when she was picked up in Tanzania, which is South Africa, of course. We know her home will be in South Africa because she wanted to come back to her children. Those were some of the submissions we heard from the lawyer representing um, the NPA or the NDPP as well as the police services saying that the presence of the police doesn't mean that uh, this was an extradition process, that the presence of the police was required in terms of the fact that not only was Bester deemed armed and dangerous, uh, but because this was someone who was a convicted felon who had uh, faked his own death, fled from prison. Um, and and then subsequently fled the country, um, saying that the presence of the police was required uh, in order to ensure that, uh, you know, the process um, of returning Besta in particular um, was uh, going to be a safe one. Um, and that, uh, in fact, Magudumana had told authorities uh, in Tanzania that she did want to come back home, uh, but that besides that, of course, there is um, um, the static protocol uh, in terms of um, the relationship South Africa has with Tanzania um, and that, uh, you know, the talks uh, with authorities, the delegation uh, that was sent to Tanzania from South Africa uh, is not something that is unusual uh, given the circumstances around how uh, Nandi, uh, Dr. Nandipa and, and Besta uh, ended up in Tanzania and, of course, uh, the processes that, unfollow that followed uh, in order to have them um, uh, return to South Africa 
to face, of course, uh, the slew of charges um, in terms of how Bissa escaped from the Mangawung um, prison. So um, the counsel for uh, the NPA as well as the police says that this matter should really be dismissed and that, uh, in essence, uh, Dr. Nandipa has not even laid a basis uh, in terms of why she thinks that this matter is urgent. Let's take a listen. You can't reject the respondent's version for being palpably untrue. You must accept it. And at page 82, the first to third respondents say, say to the court that the applicant informed all and sundry that she wanted to return to South Africa to her children. She's a mother. She's now being caught in a foreign country in the company of a escaped convict. She's been arrested by that country's police and she's been detained by that country, which they are, of course, entitled to do. And her wish is to return home to her children in South Africa. She's a South African citizen. She what, says that to everybody willing to listen. On what page is that you mentioned? I couldn't 82, clearly. Page 82. 82. Paragraph 7.8.9. The respondents go on to say that the applicant was never arrested, nor was she handcuffed at any point before or during the flight from Tanzania to the Republic of South Africa by the South African police service. Sindela, I understand the Council for Home Affairs also argued in court today for the dismissal of Makudumana's application with costs. Certainly so. Uh, both counsel for the NPA and the police as well as Home Affairs uh, are asking the court to dismiss uh, the application with costs um, of two counsel each in terms of uh, representation. Um, also uh, alluding to the fact that in her founding affidavit, uh, Dr. Nandipa isn't being honest with the court in terms of how she actually uh, ended up in Tanzania, the fact that she was uh, found um, with multiple passports that hadn't been stamps. So uh, in terms of her entry into the country, uh, that is still uh, unknown in terms of which borders they entered from because um, uh, their, their entry into Tanzania was not a lawful one. Um, also uh, showing the court that a notice from Tanzania was actually instructing uh, immigration officials in terms of how Tanzania wanted Besta and Nandipa uh, to be deported from the country, uh, stating that that deportation Transportation process had to take place uh, within three days and that uh, Tanzanian authorities would only release uh, Besta as well as Dr. Nandipa uh, to immigration officials uh, from Home Affairs from South Africa, which is why then uh, Home Affairs had to then um, charter a plane uh, to Tanzania for that handover um, of Dr. Nandipa and Besta to immigration officials uh, who then at landing at Lanseria Airport, uh, they say that is where uh, Dr. Nandipa and Besta were arrested um, on South African soil. Let's take a listen. The agreement was to deport back to South Africa. Now, Lord, we've handed up uh, the, the two agreements. And the argument is simply this. There's nothing sinister about the fact that there's cooperation between the South African Department of Home Affairs and that of the Tanzanian government. The agreement, and I'll refer your Lordship to um, Article 5. It's under the heading Combating Illegal Migration. It says the parties, the two governments, shall take measures to combat illegal migration and cooperate with regards to deportation processes and procedures. So the fact that there was cooperation between the two governments doesn't make this a reference to an agreement that we will deport. It doesn't make it a disguised extradition. 
That's Advocate Petrus Zitzman representing Home Affairs in this matter, this urgent application by Dr. Nandi Pamakutumana in the Bloemfontein High Court.